What's up, everybody? Welcome into another JHow Tech Tip where we're going to talk about the best NVIDIA control panel settings for you to get the most out of your GPU. So if you find this video helpful at the end of it, feel free to hit that like button or leave a comment below letting me know what you think. And also to continue to support the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. But let's get into the best settings so that you can get the best performance out of your video card. First, you're going to right click anywhere on your desktop. You're going to go to the NVIDIA control panel and this so you can get some information before we move forward. One thing you want to do is make sure that, look, if you already know what your video card is, then this is nothing new to you, but you can go to system information. So if you don't know what video card you have, as you can see here, I have an RTX 2080, so I know exactly what I have. This is important because, well, the first thing that you should be doing is to always make sure that you have your driver up to date. Now I've left the link in the description below, so make sure you go there. So when you come here, it's gonna be nice and easy to figure out which driver you need. For me, I'm going to go to the RTX 20 series. I can go here, I can select mine to the 2080. I can select my operating system, start search, and then I can download the driver here. Always make sure you keep your drivers up to date every month or two. As you can see, the amount of changes that go through, there are sometimes multiple per month. So you know that you wanna always make sure and keep these up for a lot of the features Features. There's even certain games that you might play, especially if you're an FPS player, where a lot of things get changed to apply directly to your game. I'll let you go through this. You can download this. It's going to automatically download it after you click download. For mine, it's basically updated, but this one came out the day before this video, so it's going to be one that I'm going to get myself. We'll focus on that later. Once you install the driver, it will require you to restart, making things a lot easier. So let's get into the settings on how to make things, assuming that you've already installed the driver. Now we're going to start from the top down. When you go into your 3D settings, make sure that you have the use the advanced 3D image settings on and then now go to the manage 3D settings. We're going to start right at the top with the image sharpening for a clearer, sharper picture. We're going to turn this on. We're going to leave the settings at 0.5 and 0.17. Now, if your video card has it available, GPU scaling is an option that you should look to turn on unless you're using some type of custom resolutions or stretched aspect ratios, which certain games do allow. And if you're competitors, sometimes we do see people use that. But for most people, GPU scaling should be on to get the most out of the blend of visuals and the FPS to make sure we have the best po possible performance as well as the best looking screen that we have. So we're going to turn that on and hit OK. Next up is the ambient occlusion, which is recommended to have on for performance. So you're just going to go ahead and put that on performance. With the filtering, you're going to leave that on to application controlled. All your anti-aliasing stuff are going to have to off on application controlled and to off. Also your CUDA GPUs, we're gonna leave that to all. When it comes to the DSR factors, which is the dynamic super resolution, for most people and basically for everybody that's out searching for settings and watching this video, you're gonna leave this to off. If you're looking for this and you know exactly what this is, you can search for it. I think for those of you that are out there that knows what this is for, you're already going to know. And well, let's be honest, you probably could be doing this video yourself. This is only really if you're trying to upscale for visuals, but look, if you're trying to get the best FPS, you're going to make sure and keep this off. When it comes to the low latency mode, this is something to where you wanna have the lower input in within games to make sure everything is more responsive. And so for this, we're gonna make sure that we have this turned to on. When it comes to your max frame rate, if you wanna leave this uncapped and get the most FPS you possibly can, you're gonna leave this to off. But if you are looking to have a very smooth game, and by smooth, what we mean is, is that it's going to be able to run at a consistent basis. You're going to run with the most consistent FPS and input time. So you want to set your FPS limit to just below your average FPS in most games, which if you're running a game and you have a higher end video card, you should be putting out great settings and you might just leave this off. If you're playing at something lower, let's say you're getting about 100 FPS, you might drop this down to set the FPS limit to about 80 to 90, thus making it a little bit easier. But let's say maybe you're getting about 100 FPS in most games, you're going to set that FPS limit to maybe 85 to 95 to make sure that you get that very smooth factor so that it keeps it there and everything looks nice and well smooth for the duration of your playtime. But let's say you do get higher than that, and like most people, really common right now is a 144 hertz monitor, you would run your FPS limit to match your monitor's refresh rate, thus making it so that you have a cap on that to match your monitor, because anything over that, well, it's basically 
basically just overkill. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna leave mine off, but it's very easy to just go ahead and set this and set it to whatever or wherever you need it. And let's say that I am playing at 144, maybe I overclock this to 165 on my monitor that has that option, we'll set this to 144. But again, for me, I'm gonna leave this to off. When it comes to your next few settings for what I'm running with 144 hertz monitor and some other things, there are some details out there. G-Sync is available, but for me, I'm gonna go with fixed refresh since I do have variable changes, but this is something you can look into. But in terms of getting the most consistency out of it, we're gonna leave that to fixed refresh. When it comes to the multi-frame sampled, we're also gonna leave this to off. Next up, this is an important one with your OpenGL rendering GPU. Now you can leave this to auto select, but for me, I wanna have it on my video card. So the GeForce RTX 2080, we wanna make sure that that's on there. We're gonna keep this because our next step with the power management mode, right now it's currently set to optimal power, but if I'm going for true performance, I'm gonna prefer maximum performance to get the most value out of what I'm trying to get from my GPU and to get the best possible settings. For the next few settings, my preferred refresh rate, currently on application controlled, I would like this to be on highest available. For the shader cache, we're going to leave this on on. For the texture filtering, in a Cytropic sample option, we're going to set this to on. For the negative LOD bias, we're gonna leave that to allow. For quality, we're actually gonna set quality to high performance. Again, we're trying to get the best performance out of what we're going, so we're gonna switch that over to high performance. For our tri-linear optimization, we'll keep this to on. For threaded optimization, that will be on. For triple buffering, we'll have it off. For the vertical sync, we're actually gonna use from use 3D application setting, we're actually going to set this to off. The remainder of the settings here, we're gonna leave the virtual reality pre-rendered frames to one and everything after that. If you have the virtual reality variable rate super sample, we'll leave that to off. Make sure before you switch anywhere else, you're gonna go down and hit the apply button and get everything applied here. Your monitor will probably go black as it applies some of those settings and you'll get things going. When it comes to the rest of the settings, you'll click on configure surround in physics. You'll go over to the processor side of things. Right now it's set to auto select. We're actually gonna set this to our GPU and we'll also hit apply again. Next, we'll go to the change resolution section. For me, it's gonna be a little bit different. I have multiple monitors as well as an Elgato, which does make things slightly more difficult. For me, I have my 144 Hertz monitor set to a 165 overclock for the most of you out there that have most monitors, everything might just be pretty standard. You wanna to go to the PC section and make sure and select the highest possible PC resolution that you have that matches your monitor as well as the refresh rate. If you're not entirely sure, make sure you can just look at your monitor. You can check out the model number, search it online, and you should be able to get that information in terms of the resolution and the refresh rate, making it very easy to make these settings. But generally, it's gonna be the highest in your dropdown list here. As you can see, most of them are here. Again, 144 normally for me, but 165. As far as the Elgato goes, well, that's a lot more complicated process. And there's another video that I have out there about this, but we'll talk about that at a different time because that's not related to this right now. Next, we'll look at the bottom area where using default color settings, we're actually gonna switch this over to use NVIDIA color settings. We'll make sure that this is set to full before we hit apply, and we're gonna apply one more time, making sure that all of our changes have gone through before switching. Now, when it comes to the adjust desktop color settings, I'm gonna leave this to you. Normally, I use, use other applications, control color settings, but one thing you can consider is go to apply in the following enhancements. A lot of people do like to adjust the digital vibrance. This is really, really personal preference. It's up to you in terms of what you want to go with. I normally don't touch this too much other than just a tiny bit. And again, we're going to hit apply. Now, as we move on from these settings, rotate display is not really for this video because that's just a matter of if you're moving your monitor and rotating it around. So if you are in that department, well, that setting's for you. As far as the next two, we'll skip that. We're going to go down to adjust desktop size and position. Now for me, I have a very unique setup because I have different refresh rates on different monitors as well as I have an Elgato hooked up. So some of my settings will look a little different than yours. For most people, we can look at the different settings here for set a scaling mode. For the best FPS, you might have it set on no scaling. For kind of a blend on FPS and visuals, you might keep the GPU scaling on and keep things there. Aspect ratio might be fine. Now, if you play lower res or pixel games, integer scaling is something that is catered to you, but for most everybody else, we'll be looking at either aspect ratio or no scaling. When it comes to perform scaling, we're gonna leave that on the GPU. 
As far as the resolution and refresh rates go, you can set all this. It should already be there. If you're having trouble like I did, one of the easiest things you can do, believe it or not, if you're running different things with an Elgato, is to have your resol resolution, but also just go into your Windows settings and change your na native resolution, thus fixing the issue that most people have with their Elgato. For the majority of you, that actually makes no sense and it's not necessary, but there's not a lot of settings here you're going to change otherwise. Next is our G-Sync. Do we keep it on or do we turn it off? For most people, if you're on a lower end PC, and you want to make sure you have smoother games, this might be something you turn on. But if you do have higher FPS, I might be recommended that you leave this off so you can keep the best FPS with the lowest input lag, thus meaning better performance overall, which is what it's all about with these settings. Now, there are some unique circumstances where you might have to have this turned on with multiple monitors or other things that you're working on. But for most people, G-Sync should be off. But again, if you are on lower ends, you might be considering keeping this on for something that you're working on. But there's other articles out there that might go more in depth to help solve those problems. For most people, this is going to be turned off. When it comes to setting up multiple displays, this should be pretty easy because, well, it's really easy to just click and drag the things that you have here. You can set up the way that it's laid out. For me, my Elgato, it's cloned, which is why they're all in one box. My second monitor, which is to the right, if I wanted this on the left, I could move it over here and then just hit apply. So it's pretty easy to set these up within that direction. It tells you which monitor is which, and whether you turn it on, whether you want to right click, you want to make it primary, whether you want to clone it. There's a lot of options here. Just mess around. If you're setting up multiple displays, maybe your main screen's on the right and you're like, wait a minute, I need this on the left. It's as simple as clicking and dragging and then hitting apply with whatever changes you made. And our last is going to be the simply adjust video color settings. We're going to go to use with the NVIDIA settings. We're going to go to advanced, we're going to take it off limited, and we're going to go to full, and we're going to hit apply. And that's going to be the final setting that we're going to have for some of the best settings using the NVIDIA control panel. It is recommended as it is the same way with your driver, making a lot of changes to your computer and your monitor and display settings. You just want to restart your PC to make sure everything is in place. And that's it for some of the best settings for the NVIDIA control panel for gaming and performance that you're going to be using for your games and stepping up and leveling up the things that you want to do. Because if you're a gamer and you're a hardcore gamer looking for the best settings, we all know that the best settings and getting every inch that we can as an advantage is going to help us out. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did help you, feel free to leave a comment below or hit the like button. If you have any questions, also leave a comment below. I'll see if I can do my best to help you out. Remember, there are certain settings that will be different based on the PC that you have. Hopefully we've addressed some of those throughout the video. Whether you're on a low-end PC, a high-end PC, whether you're running multiple monitors or not, a lot of that can change your performance overall. But for those of you that are out there looking for the best performance, these are the best settings that are out there in terms of what is generally accepted to try and get the most performance that you can. So hopefully this helped you out. And also be sure to hit that subscribe button as there's going to be future content around other optimizations and other tech-related content. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time.